The Mekong is a tropical river system. It's incredibly diverse, over a thousand species, and there's just a lot we don't know about the life histories of these different animals and what is required for their survival, for them to complete their, their life cycles and reproduce. And with the many changes that are occurring in the basin, the, the damming of rivers, the growing human population and increasing fishing pressure, the effects of climate change, it's going to be really increasingly important to know more about the life histories of these fish. My name is Jack Eschenroder. I'm a fisheries biologist with FishBio. We are deploying the first ever acoustic receiver network in Cambodia, and this is being done at a countrywide scale. So we're taking these acoustic receivers and strategically placing them uh, throughout the main stem Mekong River, as well as its major tributaries, um, the Sekong, Saison, and Srepok, or 3S Basin in the Northeast. And the reason for doing this is to be able to tag and track fish as they migrate throughout the watershed. Uh, we're working with a team in southern Laos as well uh, through the Mekong River Commission. The goal is to not only learn more about fish migration patterns, but also to potentially document transboundary migrations, fish moving among these, these different countries, which will emphasize the importance of, of these countries working together to manage and conserve fisheries in the Mekong. It's really critical that we work with the communities, we talk with the fishers who are out on the river there every single day and make sure that they are aware of what we're doing, on board with what we're doing, helping us to keep track of this stuff. Meeting with all these communities is a great opportunity to educate people on fishery science, but also to learn from them because they're on the, the river every day of their lives and, and know a lot about these different species that maybe science isn't aware of. So th there's an exchange of ideas there, and I think building the capacity for understanding of how fish populations work and um, emphasizing the need to take steps to ensure that they are able to survive uh, and able to remain productive is, is really valuable. It's hard to say what precisely we will learn from this because it's, it's not something that's been done before, but whatever we do obtain will be new information and that new information can be used to hopefully not only improve our understanding of the system, but be incorporated into uh, management approaches that, that will be beneficial to the people that live here. In spite of the fact that there's, you know, illegal gill nuts everywhere and there's dams going in and climate change, this river is absolutely full of fish. There are tons of fish in this river. I think that's a testament to its resiliency and its potential to provide this resource sustainably into the future. It's absolutely in the, the best interest of the people living along the shores of the Mekong to make sure that these fish populations continue to exist into the future. They rely on it very heavily for their protein, for their income. Rivers can provide these incredible services if we just give them half a chance to do so. And we focus really heavily in the U.S. on the services that we take from the river, you know, water for irrigation, uh, hydropower, all of which are, are very valuable, but we maybe don't focus as much on what they were already giving us.